Yo, my name's Dan Wolak. I'm the owner of Coal Cracker Bushcraft and Appalachian Bushman School. We specialize in survival and bushcraft training. We also have a kick-ass store with all kind of awesome merchandise. Today, what we're gonna look at is one thing that people ask me about all the time, like all the time, and that is, what's up with that yurt? So this is my yurt. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Now all kidding aside guys, this is probably my favorite structure that I have here. We've had wall tents set up, wigwams, debris shelters, all, all different kinds of stuff, TP. This by far is my favorite, favorite one. So we're gonna go through it. I'm gonna give you a little tour, talk about it, some commonly asked questions, and then uh, I think it'll clear the airway a little bit. So let's just start with the yurt itself. The company that it was made by, the man passed away, which is American Yurts, no longer made, unfortunately. The yurt itself is 13 feet in diameter, and although it looks brown, it's actually painted. All right, so come on in the yurt. Whew. Okay, so now we are in the yurt. If you look at the walls now in the yurt, they look more white than they did outside. So I'll give you a little background on that. When I bought the yurt originally, um, I was back and forth with the owner on the color, and then I decided on this because it was in stock. I didn't want to wait any longer. Came in, it was a lot lighter colored. It's almost a white, but it was a little bit darker, like it was a grayish, like light gray. I hated it. It stuck out like a sore thumb. So we've done all kinds of things to the outside of it, but ended up that the best thing that we can do with it is every year we basically pull off the roof, we just grab a couple cans of brown spray paint, spray paint it up, and it makes it look exactly like we wanted. Now, normal yurt, um, of course you have the lattice walls, and then you have the beams that go up to the center point in the ceiling. Now, one thing I will say is this yurt stays set up year round. It's going on year six right now, and the thing is holding up fine. We've really had no damage, especially in all the winters. And with that, I can say that out of all the structures we've ever had set up here at the school property, by far, this has been the best. If you want to talk about long-term wilderness living and like long-term living outside, this thing for Eastern Woodlands has, has held up awesome. Very good on snow bearing, so if there's a lot of snow, it holds the snow real well. And then lastly, before we actually just go around and show you how we have this set up inside, every year I sort of change the yurt up a little bit. So this year it's set up for two men um, to be able to stay inside here, and that is really about max capacity. For a 13 foot yurt with men, with gear, being able to prep and actually like live out of this thing, Two is it. Three, it starts to get really crowded, especially when you get wintertime gear in here and a stove and wood and all that. Ugh, too much. One person, this thing is like a chateau. So just rolling around here um, overall, we keep some wood in here at all times. That way at night when we wake up, we can very easily just stoke up the stove. The nice thing about a yurt is that there's a lot of stuff in places that we can hang on the walls. So you can see we have our bow saw hanging up. I keep shelves and then we have on each side, a cot set up, so that's your sleeping arrangements while you're in here. Now, towards the back, we have a little end table there that I like to keep my stuff on, and then we have a larger work table with a shelf above it. Now, what I would say is that if you were going to transport to somewhere and you needed to keep three or four people in here, of course, you'd have to lose that table, and then there would be a little bit more room. The great part of having a table in a structure like this is it gives it that home-type feeling, and you have a great area that you can actually work at. So sometimes I'll pull this end table over and I can sit on it, and then I could sit there and I have a table to work on. I'm not just always working off of my lap with things. Plus, if you're prepping a lot of food, that's a great spot to be able to do that. You can keep your food stored there and you're good to go. Top shelf up there are just some of the supplies that I try to keep here. I always keep like nails and spices and stuff like that. Down on the bottom shelf, we just keep a couple pots and some cookware and some wash bins just to keep everything nice and clean because if you know us, you know we love to eat. Now as we continue along, we have a toolbox which I'll go through here shortly, our second bunk, and then we have some buckets over there with various stuff in. Now when it comes to the toolbox, we try to just keep things in here that we're going to need around the yurt, because we're gonna go outside here, I'm gonna show you how we sort of have the outside set up then also. But inside here, um, we have just some hammers, um, a good old bit and brace, and then I have a draw knife, some rope, and then I also keep some metal shears in here in case I need to do any work with the stove pipe, I have something that I can do that with. Now the stove itself, Snow Trekker stove, I can't say 
enough good stuff about this thing. This thing stays outside almost year round. This is like a staple in here. And when you warm this yurt up, it is warm. We already had this up to, we brought a thermometer in 98 degrees inside here. Now that's absolutely obnoxious, but it can get that hot inside of here. If you keep this stove going, you just keep it cooking and cooking and cooking. Normally what we have found with this is that if you fill up this stove and you try to keep it at a temperature that isn't too hot, but it just takes the chill out, it is so comfortable. Because if you're outside all day operating in 15 or 20 degree weather, and then it is 40 in here or 45 in here, it's so nice. You can just wear your base layer, you move around when you sleep, it's not too hot, it's not too cold. It just takes that chill out and it is perfect. Now outside the yurt, we have a fire pit area because if we can, we like to cook on the fire rather than on that stove top. When you cook on top of that stove, it gets super, super hot in there. So it's better to just do your cooking out here and then go inside and eat. And then we keep a wood pile here because we go through firewood like crazy when we are staying in there. And then go along with our wood, we have a saw buck. So if we bring wood back to camp, we can actually saw it up and buck it up. And then we slide right over here. We split it up. And then again, I showed you earlier where we can actually store our wood. So we have a little system here of how we actually store our wood. And then off to one side, we have our blacksmithing equipment. We use this in some of our classes here at the Bushman School. But we also like to have this here because if you want to make something hooks or cook system, you can just bang it out and it's done. And that's it. That is the infamous yurt here at the Appalachian Bushman School. Again, my favorite structure, so I wanted to share it with you. I know a while ago I did some crazy videos on this, but um, that was like, huh, when I was first starting YouTube, and they are not good videos. Not good at all. Good afternoon, guys. Today we're going to talk about punk wood and how to char it. Stay tuned. All right, so what I did was I took a short scout around and I found some down wood. And basically to find punk wood, but lucky for everybody here, I came a far way with it and I wanted to share this again because it is pretty cool and it's cool to check out and it's absolutely awesome to stay in. So this was Dan Wolwak with Coalcracker Bushcraft and Appalachian Bushman School. Check out all of our stuff at coalcrackerbushcraft.com. And until next video, stay in the woods or if you have a yurt or access to a yurt, stay in it. Ah, oh, they're awesome.